Good evening, everybody. We are going to go ahead and get started with the I-75 Modernization Project Segment 3 Open House tonight. Uh, if you could just stay muted the, during the meeting, we are going to allow folks to speak at the end using the Q&A and through the raising hand function. If you've dialed in on a phone, you can use star 9 to mute and unmute yourself. And we are recording this meeting. It will be posted on the website and on social media later for you to view. We'd like to start with the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. It requires MDOT to provide the opportunity for everyone to comment on transportation programs and activities that may affect their community. There's a three question survey that's going to be placed in the chat and you can help MDOT comply with Title VI and related statutes which require the collection of statistical data to aid in assessing MDOT's outreach efforts among those who are affected or interested in this project. And again, that link will be pasted in the chat. It's a quick three question survey. So if you could take that, it would be greatly appreciated. And now I'm going to hand it over to Sean. Hey, thank you, Kristen. And uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we appreciate you attending. Um, this is our third uh, in a series of public meetings that we're doing uh, before the construction every year for the I-75 segment three project. The uh, I-75 segment three project extends from eight mile road north to uh, north of 13 mile road. So I know through the, the last several years, obviously this corridor has had a lot of work uh, performed on, along it. Uh, we are actually part of the segment three project, as I mentioned, but just to give you a little background, this is the third and final piece of an 18 mile I-75 modernization project. The first segment was from north of Coolidge to north of South Boulevard, that was about just over three miles and was completed and open to traffic in 2017. The second segment ran from north of 13 mile road to north of Coolidge Highway, about an 8.6 mile segment. This project is still under construction. It will be open to traffic in 2021. The majority of the freeway work has been completed, but there is some work uh, at some of the interchanges still that is ongoing. Um, I do want to note that this presentation tonight is really about the segment three project. Uh, uh, we're not really here to talk about the segment two project, but we did include the email, which is listed there under I-75 segment two uh, heading that you can send questions to. Uh, also at the end of the presentation, we'll show that email again. But again, the focus tonight is really on the segment three project, which as I mentioned, extends from eight mile road to north of 13 mile road, about a five and a half mile stretch. So again, the good news is we are the last of the segments here and um, uh, in completing this, this, uh, this project of of freeway reconstruction, bridge rebuilding, uh, and adding uh, uh, HOV lane as well. So uh, we have two more years left after this year, but we're, we're almost there. Introductions and uh, meeting format. So this, this team is, is unique to uh, normal MDOT projects. The reason is this is a P3, a public private partnership project. Uh, and it, it includes a design, build, finance, and maintain component to it. Um, so it's a little different than the normal traditional project where MDOT's the owner uh, and they hire a contractor to build a project for them. This one is a more collaborative effort and actually there is uh, some financing involved for the project. The owner though, of course, is still MDOT. They actually have an owner's representative, which is a consultant by the name of WSP. And then there's actually a developer called Oakland Corridor Partners. And they're actually responsible for designing, building, financing, and maintaining the project for the next 30 years, basically. And then there's a contractor on the team that's called MI-75 Constructors, and they're responsible for actually doing the construction work, building the bridges, building the roads, et cetera. And then there's a lead designer, uh, and that's AECOM. Again, as Kristen alluded to before, this is a, uh, a virtual public meeting. Uh, we will have a presentation followed by a Q&A session. And again, uh, please submit your questions using the Q&A tool if you can, but we'll also uh, call on you as well if you raise your hand with questions. So the focus of the presentation tonight is about the 2021 work. So what are we getting ready to do? Um, I think probably as most of you know on this call, uh, last year was a busy year in this, on this corridor, um, specifically the northbound side from eight mile to I-696 was reconstructed. Several built bridges were replaced. Um, some walls were built, sound walls. Uh, we also started a drainage tunnel. So it was a busy year last year. So now we're getting ready for 2021. So we wanna highlight what we're gonna be hitting uh, this construction year. First piece that I wanna highlight is the reconstruction of southbound I-75. 
So again, we built the northbound side last year. So now we're doing the other half, basically. Uh, again, that's from eight mile to 696. In addition to rebuilding the freeway, constructing new walls, new drainage systems, uh, sound walls, et cetera, we're gonna be working on some bridges. First bridge we're gonna hit is the Highland Avenue bridge, pedestrian bridge. That's gonna start late winter. It's gonna be demolished here uh, late February, early March and uh, replaced completely. As we continue moving north, the Browning Avenue bridge, that will also be starting late winter here. So um, uh, that will be get removed and replaced. Obviously when these PED bridges are closed, they, they will be uh, closed and detoured during, that, during the work. And then continue moving north, Shevlin Avenue bridge will be replaced this year as well. Again, that's on a similar time frame. Late winter, we'll be tearing down that bridge and starting to, to build it up again. We continue north, 11 mile road bridge will be replaced as well. That will start more in the summer time frame. So that, that's not gonna be an immediate thing, but come, come the summer, there will be a period of time uh, starting around July when that gets closed and, and removed and replaced. We'll also be replacing the Bel Air pedestrian bridge. That will be starting in summer as well. One item of note on that Bel Air, uh, Bel Air pedestrian bridge, they've actually started doing some of the work for the new bridge already. It's, uh, it's off alignment, so they haven't had to impact the existing ped bridge at, uh, uh, access. So they're trying to get some work done before they actually close the bridge, uh, which they'll have to do when they start building the spans across the freeway. Moving further north, we're looking to reconstruct southbound I-75, about 2,000 feet of it south 13 mile and about 1,000 feet of it north of 13 mile road. So about a total of 3,000 feet of southbound I-75 will get rebuilt this year as well. And then finally, the southbound I-75 bridge over 13 mile road will be replaced as well. And that work will start late winter as well. How are we gonna build this, this work this year? So it's gonna be similar in concept to what everybody probably experienced last year. You know, last year we built the northbound side and had traffic maintained on the southbound side. Well, we're gonna do the opposite this year. We're going to uh, take the southbound I-75 traffic and cross it over to the northbound I-75 side. That way we'll be able to work on that southbound side. A minimum of two lanes uh, on I-75 will be maintained in each direction at all times, similar to last year. Uh, in addition, portions of the southbound service drive from eight mile to Shevlin will be periodically closed and detoured through traffic. Uh, on top of that, several ramps will be closed and detoured due to the work. Uh, some of them we cannot maintain safely while the construction work is happening. And we'll get into those, uh, which ramps are detoured here on the next slide. Uh, driveway access will be maintained except during dry driveway with construction. So if you have a, a house along the service, southbound service drive, for example, you know, you will have access to your house. It's not like we're gonna uh, uh, block that off or anything like that, except when that construction is happening right at, right at the driveway itself. And then finally, of course, emergency service will be maintained at all times. So the ramp closures that will be happening in 2021, you'll notice here, most of the ramps that are closed are related to the southbound I-75 work between eight mile and 696. That's where most of these ramps are located. And that's because we're gonna be working on the freeway on that side, uh, ripping everything out, doing heavy grading, lots of wall work, lots of machinery. So we can't safely maintain it um, during, that, during that time. So the, the, the main ramps that are gonna close, southbound I-75 to eight mile road exit ramp, that'll be closed starting in late winter. The nine mile road ramp to southbound I-75, that's the entrance ramp there will also be closed starting late winter. The southbound I-75 to Nine Mile Road X ramp will be closed as well, starting in late winter. And then the two eastbound and westbound I-696 ramps to uh, southbound I-75 will, build, will both be closed as well. And that's gonna start late winter. So it's uh, just a few weeks away actually. And then finally, as I mentioned, the 11 mile road bridge will be replaced uh, and that will start this summer. Well, when the bridge gets replaced, we will have to close the ramps that head the 11 mile. So that is, that's targeted to happen in the summer, summer time frame. So we wanna highlight a few of the key detours um, that, I, that I mentioned for these ramps. The first one here is the eastbound I-696 to southbound I-75 ramp. The blue line represents the normal path cars would take 
They basically would head to eastbound 696, get to the 696-75 interchange, and take that ramp to southbound I-75. That ramp will be closed starting late winter, and the detour route will take the folks who are traveling eastbound 696. It'll get them off at M10, the Lodge Freeway, and it will run them south down to 8 Mile. And then at 8 Mile, they'll head, head easterly back to I-75 and then get on the freeway heading south. And that's shown in the purple line there. Westbound side, again, that ramp will be closed as well, westbound 696 to southbound I-75. Similarly, the blue line represents the normal path a car would take if you're traveling westbound 696 to southbound I-75. Come late winter, that, or early, I'm sorry, late winter, that will be closed, that movement. And then we'll look to detour folks. Uh, we'll catch folks at the M53 interchange along westbound 696. We'll head south on M53 Van Dyke down to 8 Mile, and then westerly on 8 Mile to southbound I-75 and get back on the freeway there. And again, those detours will be in place for pretty much the entire construction season. In addition, the service drives will be impacted periodically. So there will be some detours on the service drives as well. Specifically, I'm talking between 8 Mile and 696. Again, you can see the blue lines represent the normal path that folks would take for both southbound and northbound service drives along the freeway. So for the southbound service drive that's shown on the left of the screen, you would detour across on the service drive up to Woodward. You take Woodward south down to 8 Mile and then head easterly on 8 Mile to 75 and get back on the freeway southbound. Similarly, on the northbound side, you would head east on 8 Mile and then head northerly on DeQuinder. You take DeQuinder up to the 696 service drive and take it back towards uh, the, the I-75 northbound service drive and hop back on by the freeway there. Again, shown in purple. These, these uh, detours will not be in place necessarily the whole season, but there will be, they will be happening periodically. So those are the highlights of what's happening above ground. Um, and those who have been to some of these presentations before uh, may be aware that there is a, a large storage drainage tunnel being built with the project. As uh, folks who live in the area probably know, the interchange at I-75 and 696 has flooded uh, several times over the last decade. And this is what's being built to hopefully solve that problem. Uh, so the tunnel has started. Um, there's actually a tunnel boring machine in the ground uh, and it's a, it's actually got a name, it's called ELIZA. That was actually a public vote that was decided. And basically we've started at the I-696 shaft. So you can see on the screen there where the I-696 shaft is, that's in the I-75, I-696 infield area. And they've started mining to the north. They've actually already mined 2,100 feet, which is just north of Lincoln from that shaft site at 696. In addition, they've started shafts, all the, all the various shafts that are required with the tunnel. Uh, with the exception of the miter shaft. So just to clarify what a shaft is, the shaft is an access point to the tunnel. It's really like a big manhole that, that, that goes down to the tunnel so you can actually access it um, from, from above ground. And the reason it's a big deal is that depth of the tunnel is as deep as 100 feet. So this is much deeper than maybe a normal manhole would be. So it's an it's a, it's a enlarged version of a manhole, essentially, uh, a lot deeper. So again, this has been happening under the northbound service drive. And again, 2,100 feet has been mined and they continue to move forward. I got a few photos of the tunnel, tunnel machine and some of the progress that they have just because uh, just, uh, it might be interesting to the folks who haven't seen it before. So this first photo is the actual machine itself. This machine was built just for this project. Where the tunnel we're building is a 14 and a half foot diameter tunnel. So the, the photo you can see there is the cutter head. So that's actually placed in the ground and that cutter head spins and it pulls the dirt out and they, they bring it up the shaft, which the tunnel machine was dropped in and they keep moving their way on and they build the, they build the tunnel as they go basically. So it kind of works like an auger more or less. So this is the 696 shaft site that I mentioned previously. So as you can see, um, and if you've driven around this area, you've probably seen that this is a, this is a site that's been fenced off. It's a big work area. Work area. On the left of this photo, you can see where the shaft is. It's actually a, a large hole. The diameter of that, of that shaft there is about, I think it's about 60 to 65 feet. So 
So it's a very large hole that goes down about 70, 80 feet deep. And basically you can see the crane that's adjacent to that shaft, that a crane similar to that was used to drop the, the tunnel machine down that hole. And uh, that's, that's where we all started. So from that point, we've, we've extended 2,100 feet to the north, which would be the up, upward area of that photo. And we'll continue working towards 12 mile, which is about two miles away. Once we're done at 12 mile, we'll pull the machine out. We'll bring it back to this location here at 696. We'll drop the machine down and we'll head to the south and we'll head down to Myers and, and that's, that's the limits of the tunnel. So this is all part of the plan to, to help, help uh, with the drainage issues that have happened the last, the last decade. Here's another, another shot of the shaft. Uh, as you can see, as you look down the hole, that's where the machine is entered. Um, and actually they have conveyors that run out, uh, run the dirt out and they have a, a clam bucket on a crane that pulls the dirt out and, uh, and they haul it off. So that's, that's the work that's happening down below basically. And that's, that's happening constantly. That, uh, that doesn't stop over the winter like some of the, the above ground work does. This is, this is gonna be going on for probably the next two years essentially uh, between heading north and then heading south. Here's a picture inside of the tunnel. So you can see they, like I said, they've built about 2,100 feet of it. And this just gives you a, a perspective of what it looks like inside. Okay, so project schedule. So this is 2021 that we're on. Um, so we just wanna note that in 2019, we did a lot of temporary work and clearing and we did the Dallas structure removal. 2020, the focus was really on northbound I-75 from eight mile to I-696. This year, the primary focus is the Southwest quadrant. We call it that southbound I-75 from eight mile to 696. There is some work that we're doing north of 696 as well, but the primary focus is that, that Southern piece. And that's gonna be happening this year. We're gonna be starting here uh, uh, late February, early March, and the work will extend, will, will extend until mid-November. So I would like to note um, some work has started on the service drives already. So you probably have noticed that if you, uh, if you live in the area, um, but uh, the I-75 work is gonna, gonna start very soon. In fact, it's scheduled to start February 26th. So that's just over two weeks away. So we're almost to the start of the 2021 construction season. Now, as we get done with 2021, we'll have two more years left. We have a 2022 uh, construction season. that will start again on 75, March 1, roughly, and go to mid-November. And then 2023, we'll begin, we'll, we'll finish up the project. We'll be building the southbound side of 75, and that will wrap up around August, September of 2023 in that timeframe. 